Yeah, I am good to go. All righty. So today we'll be talking about uh, completing the past. And this is out of the book, The Best Year Ever by Michael Hyatt. And the chapters we'll kind of be covering here is thinking backward is a must. Regret reveals opportunity and gratitude makes the difference. So kind of getting right into it, um, I included his life score. Um, and what this kind of does is, is at the beginning of the book as well, um, he breaks down kind of 10 domains of life and um, kind of gauges where you're at um, on a scale of one to seven. Uh, and this is, a, this is a test that you can take as well. I got the website there on it, it's in the book as well. Um, it took, about, took me about six minutes, six, seven minutes, so really quick. Um, and it kind of gives you out a score here. Um, and I include this as well because I'll touch it based on it later in the presentation. Um, but kind of going down the line, so the first one is spiritual, um, your connection with God. Uh, the second one is intellectual. Uh, this is your engagement with significant ideas and kind of what you're reading, what articles you're reading, how you're kind of keeping your learning going. Um, number three is emotional. This is your psychological health and how you're feeling in your head. Uh, physical, this is your body and how healthy you are at the moment. And then you've got marital. This is your spouse or significant other, uh, your children. You kind of rate that one to seven as well, kind of your relationship with your children. Uh, social, this is uh, kind of what it is, you know, kind of your social life and your friends and your associates and how that, how that looks in your life. Uh, vocational, this is just your job and your profession. Uh, and then you've got your hobbies and pastimes as well. And then finally, uh, your financial health and kind of how that's looking uh, for you as of now. And you're able to click off a couple uh, or any kind of categories that don't apply to you. So for me, I uh, unchecked marital and parental. Um, and then I got a score from there. And uh, I'll touch base on this a little bit later, but my lowest there, if you can look closely, it was actually physical. So I haven't been too diligent going to the gym. So I put that as a two out of seven. Um, but looking at a holistic view, um, he ranked me as success. Um, and that's kind of middle ground. Um, I'm forgetting the, uh, the best out of best, you know, kind of like in the six and seven realm, but my average was a five and six and I was labeled as success. Um, so yeah, I'll touch that on that a little bit later as we get into it more um, and kind of, kind of going forward here. Um, he first talks about uh, after action review. Um, and so this, this kind of process here, he, he breaks it down into four stages, which I'll get into. Um, and actually the military uses this tactic as well when they're training. Uh, they'll use it in, in training exercises uh, as well as in the field. And what it boils down to is kind of what happened. Um, and this is usually on both successes and failures, but what happened, uh, why did it happen and how to improve upon it, even if it was a success. Um, so super simple. And, you know, Mr. Hyatt kind of goes, goes into it within four stages. And I pulled a quote too as well um, from the text. It's cannot complete the past until we acknowledge what we have already experienced. And that kind of, you know, captures the, the entire theme here with, uh, with completing the past. And he does do a little bit of a disclaimer here early in the, in the section, section two of the book. Um, he says this, these tactics aren't for the traumatic events. You know, those events that are really, that really hit you hard. He leaves that to more, um, those psychologists and those who are more qualified. These events that we're gonna be talking about today is more the frustrations, the setbacks or disappointments you've kind of experienced in the past year. Um, so that's kind of what this is focused on. And so moving forward onto stage one, uh, as simple as it sounds, it is state what you wanted to happen. Um, so looking at these frustrations and disappointments, it's you really just gotta say, hey, what did I want to happen? Um, it's very straightforward. And he put another disclaimer on this as well. He says, hey, you might feel a bit of sadness when doing it. Like, you know, you're, you're really trying to go for your goal and go for your dream this past year or in the past few months. And um, the, the first step is just to say, hey, what did you want to do? What did you want to, ha to have happened? Um, and essentially, as, as simple as it sounds, it, it kind of piggybacks off what stage two is, but it's the, uh, it's the first step in, you know, addressing the, the emotional baggage that, um, of that failure. And so going to stage two here on the next slide, it's, uh, it's different than stage one. It's not just saying it, this is acknowledging what actually happened. Um, and he does, a, a, and he mentions, um, sorry here, 
Um, this is different than the first stage. It's getting in more into the weeds a little bit. It's um, first thing he mentions too with acknowledging what happened is to jot down these disappointments uh, within the year in a journal form. Uh, you know, actually writing down your disappointments um, will help acknowledge and give time to reflect on what actually happened. And, you know, it, it's what you, uh, what do you feel you should have been acknowledged for, but weren't? And he gives a great example here in the, in the text as well. He uses um, a single mom example. It's, uh, you know, when you, when you have a single mom situation, you know, they're doing X, Y, and Z, and then the whole other alphabet just to keep the house, house afloat. And they're not, you know, getting acknowledged for oftentimes they're not getting acknowledged with everything that they're doing. And so in this stage, in this point, in this example here, it would be writing down what you weren't acknowledged for. Um, and so, yeah, the, I mean, basically what you would want to put on the heading here is just what disappointments or regrets did you experience this past year? And to kind of begin there. Um, and so moving forward or sort of moving forward here, continuing with stage two is um, yeah, you want to write down, acknowledge what bad happened this past year, but conversely, on the other side of the coin, you want to write down your wins as well and what you're most proud of this past year. Um, and this side, you know, is often downplayed um, when analyzing, you know, your emotional health and just where you are at in, in, in your stage of life. It's often downplayed, um, but it's just as much needed. And what this would look like is, you know, what wins you, what wins you've experienced. So this would be milestones and relationships, milestones and your occupations and just kind of specific wins you've experienced. And uh, I'd love to open it up to the group as well here to kind of share something or when you've experienced this past year and I'll share mine first as well. Um, you know, creating this presentation, I had to think about it for a second, but um, I would say last year, a, a little win that I had was uh, I made it a, I made it a point to myself to run 10 miles straight. And I actually did in the fall. I mean, I ran 10 miles straight, almost flat out, you know, it was, it was tough because it was going through neighborhoods and stuff, but I was averaging, I think it was 8.45 or nine minutes for 10 miles um, on average, of course. Um, but that was like a little win that I had as well. Um, so I thought I'd share that with the group and I'd love to hear um, your, your guys' wins as well. Yeah, that's awesome, Phil. Um, you know, honestly, last year, my biggest goal was just to, uh, <laughs> to make it through this year, the last year. Um, cause it was like my first full year here at integrity capital. And so my biggest goal was actually just to succeed. Um, and there was a, a dollar amount I wanted to hit and it was, it was actually 300,000 fees. I got to 250, which was still pretty darn good, but, no. um, that was a huge success. And it just kind of empowered me to realize that nothing will ever stop you when you have a true passion for something and you really want to go after it. So that was my big uh, stretch goal. It was, it was fun getting there. So yeah, absolutely. But now that means this year it's even higher. So it's, right. yeah. it's uh, yep. two, 2 million this year down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I think my big, my big win of last year was, was getting married yeah. and like even like down to the wire like you know, making it happen because it was yeah. you know <clears throat> with covid coming through and changing our date and we're like nope we're gonna do it no matter what yeah and it's not on the the saturday we wanted and it was so i mean man our wedding was awesome i mean was I was, yeah awesome. like it was it was really cool we got our we got our pictures back the other day and like oh my gosh like <laughs> like just when we see the pictures and everything it's just like it you know they're now all around the house but every time you see them it's just like like mind-blowing like what an accomplishment what a day that was so that was that Huge that was my most what i was most proud of this uh, mm. past two years just not just get the, the getting married but actually making it happen with the yeah. all the obstacles thrown at us yeah <laughs> it was a big big deal yeah yeah it's a great job tom great job yeah. absolutely absolutely um, anyone else want to share a little win or a big win that they had last year? I'm just so proud that I have a healthy little boy and he's yeah. thriving and, yeah. you know, well-adjusted and level and all the things. He's just amazing. So I know that most of that is to God, right? But um, I had a little part in that, you know, I had some sleepless yeah. nights and, and some hard, hard moments to get here. So I'm definitely proud of that. Should be. Absolutely. Great. Great mom, you're a great mom. Thank you. Absolutely, yeah, fantastic. Those are fantastic. 
Um, and yeah, kind of going forward with things here. Uh, the next stage, you know, is, is learn from the experience. Um, it's essential for the idea of progression. And this is a big, big chunk of the section here in the book. Um, if you think about it, there wouldn't be a point to analyzing the past if we can't learn from it. Um, this is kind of what stage three is about, is just learning from the experience. Um, you know, the, the lessons we learn from the shortfalls act as tools going forward in life. Um, another thing you want to remember is not just learn from it, the, le the lessons that we've had in the shortfalls, it's also to retain these lessons. And this goes right along with, with journaling and, you know, writing down what you've learned and um, that helps you progress going forward. Um, and then stage four, you know, is just kind of adjusting your behavior. Behavior will lead to, you know, what you want to happen versus what actually happens. That pivot point is your behavior moving forward. Um, it's not enough just to learn from the experience. You need to change the way you're at, how your actions have an effect moving forward in life. You know, all the grief that was endured and endured um, in those shortfalls and in, in those disappointments that you had last year would have been for nothing if you do nothing about it, right? You can't, if you have it, then they're just kind of there, you know, and you're stuck in that mindset, which I'll get into uh, actually in the next slide, but um, you want to progress, you want to learn from it and not have that be, and not have that repeated, right? And going along with that, I pulled a quote here as well. It's those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. Um, so essentially what it boils down to is just kind of learn from the past and build it forward, right? And so moving forward as well here in the presentation, um, regret reveals opportunity. Um, this first point here, believing you're a failure, you'll never run out of proof. And I think it's very powerful to pull that from the text as well. Um, and if you think of it, regret is a form of information in a way. After analyzing what what we want to do in the future to avoid our mistakes from repeating them. Um, you can use regret as motivation. Um, you know, if you, for example, if you realize you haven't spent enough time with your family and you really regret that, like, wow, I should have, you know, made that soccer game. I should have done this, this, and this. You should use that as motivation. You know, the, the answer is spend time with your family. Like you're motivated to do that. You miss that time with them. Use it as motivation. Use that regret as motivation to improve going forward. Um, and that's what, regret reveals opportunity is about. And I put in here as well, um, he mentions in the text, the comparison between I am a screw up versus I screwed up. Um, you know, glancing over that looks very similar. Um, but if you look, if you kind of analyze that more, you know, I screwed up, that's kind of a fact that happened. You can't do much about it. Um, but if you're saying to yourself, I am a screw up, you're putting a roadblock to move forward. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's head trash, right? So that's the difference between saying I am a screw up versus I screwed up. Mm. Um, and this leads directly into, you know, the opportunity principle. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me, in the text as well, use a great example. So there's a study at U of I um, where students went out and asked other students, what's um, your biggest regret that you had? And they found a pattern that these regrets fell into six different categories. And it's very comparable to those 10 domains of life that Mr. Hyatt had in, in the beginning of the book here. Um, and what they found is that most of these regrets fell within education, career, romance, parenting, self-improvement, and leisure. Um, so it's pretty cool to see that it's a, it's a real world, world example that this test that we can take here um, can really show where our regrets kind of lie in. Um, and so that's, that goes along with the opportunity principle. It's just, it's, it's a matter of tweaking your mindset to saying the regret, this regret that I've had isn't a roadblock, but it's a stepping stone or an opportunity to progress in life. Um, it's a different perspective of regret in a sense. Yeah. So um, moving forward as well here, um, he spends a lot of time talking about gratitude. I know we've done this a lot as a group as well. Um, say what we're grateful for and everything and he gives a great great examples in the book um and they read so he says gratitude as a way of being complacent and so this idea i wasn't quite familiar with gratitude can be seen as a way of being complacent and the idea behind this is that if everything is super good in life and you're grateful for everything about your life there's no point in being better right and that's kind of oh it's got some teeth to it but he kind of, he shoots us, he shoots us down. It's not the case. You know, you always want to be grateful. Um, and so Robert Emmons um, had experiment with great gratitude as well. So he took two groups of people. Um, one, he had them journal about 
everything that they're grateful for. And he had another group that did not journal. And he watched them for two months time. And they also had goals written out at the beginning. And the group that journaled were significantly closer to reaching that goal, that short-term goal, uh, relative to time, it was a short-term goal than those that weren't. So it just proves the case that even if you're, if you're grateful, it's not gonna hinder you in progressing in life. It's gonna help you progress. Uh, it's the positive mindset. You know, if being grateful for everything around you creates an optimistic view and it makes you resilient um, to, to move forward towards those goals. So that gratitude as a way of being complacent is, is false. So I thought I'd include that here in the presentation as well. So I, I thought that was interesting. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess I, I'll take the opportunity again today to reach out to, to let the, the group speak as well. Um, just to open it up, you know, is there anything that super simple, super, super easy, anything that you're grateful for today, you know, no matter how small, to kind of get us more into that optimistic mindset. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm just, um, you know, I, I try to every morning just to go through uh, the things that I'm grateful for. I mean, just the roof over my head, the fact that I'm walking today. Um, grateful for you guys. Just, yeah, there's so, there's so much to be grateful for. Um, you know, we're very, we're very blessed. Mm -hmm. I, I had a, one of my boys was being overly grumpy for a while, which surprising kids have grumpy moments. Shocker. Shocker. Um, and I think I stole this one from you, Dave, but we were sitting around the dinner table and I just started making them say what they were grateful for, you know, like, you know, just give me, give me something you're grateful for. And, you know, they're young. So, you know, it's kind of, some of it was, you know, well, grateful for my toys and stuff like that, you know. But it, it, it made them think and did it again, you know, uh, the next night or the night after. And it's kind of interesting because they still bring it up today, you know, and it was something we did months ago. And they say, you know, we haven't we haven't talked about what we're grateful for. Mm. And it kind of it kind of makes you realize that, you know, you're only going to want to do something if it's something you like doing. Yeah. And it's something that, you know, brings you bring, you know, like, sure. you know, nobody's going to go like, oh, I can't wait to take out the trash, you know, yeah. <laughs> but when, especially when they're a kid, but the fact that in their mind, something's triggering them to say, I want to do something I like, oh, I want to talk about what I'm grateful for. So just the, there's obviously something that goes on inside your head when you start yeah. thinking with that, that attitude of what you are grateful for. Yeah, yeah. Sure. absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, that's right. On, you hit it right on the head there, Tom. Yeah. It's just, it's just small things you could say to help put you in that mindset, you know, that positive, optimistic mindset, you know. Um, I thought I'd include as well, uh, he used another kind of case study um, and he, he kind of laid out the, the correlation between gratitude and patience. Um, they had another group, uh, they had to complete a task, they brought people in, you got to just complete this cat task and we'll, we'll pay you. And they didn't know what the motive was uh, of the case. Um, but they were looking at, you know, um, they were looking at, you know, the, the correlation between gratitude uh, and patience. And they said, you no, know, they had one group, you know, journal uh, how much th they were grateful for. And they had a, another group that didn't journal at all. And they said, we'll pay you today um, this amount of much in cash. Or, you know, if you want to wait, we'll get out checks, you know, at a 12% increase in, in pay in, in two weeks. And it, there's a direct correlation between those that were grateful said, hey, yeah, I can wait. Um, I'll take that 12% more. And those that didn't or weren't grateful or didn't write down uh, more often than not took the cash up front. So I thought that was really interesting. I, I thought I'd include that hmm. as well. Um, That's good. Yeah. And to, uh, to kind of land the plane here, hopefully I'm not going too fast. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to have more of what you want until you're thankful for what you have now. Um, and, you know, Mr. Hyatt also included the George Bailey technique at the end of the section here. I thought it was, it was, it was fantastic. It's, you know, if you're struggling to find something that you're grateful for, um, it's a good technique to do. So what he says is, you know, find something good that's in your life, you know, something that's good, something that not necessarily you're grateful for, maybe you are, um, something that's good, you know, a vehicle, uh, you know, a roof over your head, like heating and cooling. Um, and then he said, take the time out to imagine your life without it. He said, really sit down and imagine you didn't have a car to get to work and just like 
visualize your life like that. And, you know, that's, that's an immediate way to source some gratitude um, in your life kind of going forward. Um, he also included, you know, a couple, couple of exercises as well, you know, begin and end the day with a prayer, express thankfulness by expressing gratitude for the little things, you know, it's a lot of this section of the book is just looking at the little things, those little regrets, those big regrets, but also those, those little gratitude, those, those little things that you're grateful for as well. And, um, as mentioned throughout, uh, just keep a gratitude journal and, and update it is the thing too. You don't want to just have it write a couple of things down and then put it on the shelf. You want to have it uh, and always update it as you go on, as you go on this year to have your best year ever. Um, so yeah, that kind of kind of concludes the presentation for today. Great stuff. Uh, thanks, thanks Phil. Phil. Thank you, Phil. Good, good reminder mm -hmm. for all of us.